So let's have a discussion on this Allemand from BWV996. That's from the suite. This is the second movement in the suite. Um, you follow the video for free and pick up some of the tips and just um, engage in the discussion. But if you're interested, I do have an edition of the work, so there's a link for that under the video. The Allemand is the second movement in this work, so we've already done the Prelude and Presto and uh, performance and video lessons, so there, there's a link for that as well. This is the second movement. So let's just talk about the Allemand for a second um, as a dance movement. So in a suite such as this one, there's a number of dance movements. Um, in this case, after the prelude, there's a number of stylized dance movements. And often in the Baroque era, lots of suites would open with the Allemand instead of a prelude. And um, that's maybe one of the reasons why the Allemand um, ended up being so harmonically rich. Often it would explore the harmonies of the suite movements that follow um, and would be quite har uh, harmonically rich, sometimes very, quite slow. Um, but in this particular case, especially maybe because we have the prelude already, we have quite an Italianate kind of um, Allemand with running 16th notes. So it picks on a little bit faster of a pace, but still quite harmonically rich and exploring the harmonies of the work. So this is a difficult piece. This is definitely an advanced level work. So if you haven't played um, stylized dance movements before in a suite, there's lots of other composers or easier works that you should start with. And you, you know, you should work your way up. Um, if you pick some easy pieces like the um, easy low, low G pieces or low C pieces, or even some of the easier Bach works like the cello suites. Um, cello suite number three is the first one that I kind of really did a full suite of. Um, then you can learn the, the, how to stylize each dance and make them contrasting and whatnot and, uh, and learn a lot without so much difficulty in fingering. But nevertheless, um, let's just talk about this. In this particular piece, like I said, it should be quite harmonically rich. So I think the main portion of our lesson today will just be going over how to think about that and then maybe just do a quick walkthrough. But um, getting too deep into this piece is kind of silly because it's so advanced that, that you should have worked your way up to this level by using other pieces. So the rich harmony in this piece, you know, it, it comes down to the way you finger it, but they're, so, it, they're such difficult works that it, it's quite difficult to finger it and always get the result that you want. But you can encourage it by exploring the harmonies. So instead of kind of thinking of it as a single line, you need to think of it more as chords. some of those chord shapes. So going through the piece and, and thinking of it like that, will it'll mess up the piece a little bit, but it'll give you that rich kind of idea of... of, of the harmonies in the work. So let me just play that and uh, I'll do like a weird um, chordal based performance of the first line and then I'll do the actual piece. piece. So of course it ends up being more complex but you want to be feeling and hearing those harmonies and so you should go through the whole work and just see how much of it you can finger as chords. And I try to strike a balance in my edition of, of trying to hold chords as long as possible but also being somewhat practically minded that this is difficult music, so we have to finger it in a way that's practical and um, possible to play as well. So I try to hold on to things, but then at times I'll drop things in, in order for 
you know, performance ease, right? And you just try to make, you try to make the best mix as possible on the guitar. Um, I, I suggest we just do a little walkthrough. Lots of holding of notes. So just whenever you have that thick counterpoint, just make sure you're thinking of the bass line. Uh, let's see. Two independent musical lines there. Um, there's kind of three three voices actually, but um, you can focus mainly on two there. And just make sure you're listening to both lines and trying to get them to come out as smoothly as possible, especially in the second line as well from bar three. All through here. Just try to hold on to your bass notes long enough while maintaining those upper sixteenth notes. Two are available. Three, two, four, two, stretch. Knee back. Uh, closed B. Open B. Shift on the open B. Works out actually fairly nicely. some editions drop some of the thirds at the end there like the Kuntz edition but you know the original has those thirds so I would include them um, it's technically difficult but it's next to a cadence you can just relax the tempo slightly second half I use an open string there just to navigate so that would be an example of where I kind of let go of the previous chord but for practical purposes um, it, it, you kind of have to My solution there is to jump up to fifth position and play the E and the G here, and then open, then closed. Open, closed. More counterpoint. A little bit of a tricky thing to be barring and fourth finger and then have a trill but it's act it's somewhat secure because you place the bar before just make sure you're barring enough that you can get that sixth string you know like it would be so great if some of these chords were completely sustained, but it gets so difficult with the extra notes that sometimes you, you do an open string and then you, you close it right away and just try to get some of the harmony out. Um, it's not ideal, but it's, it's a difficult work. So. so there, I really wanted that harmony there. places like that like to be sw switching all the time and closing everything would just be too much of a handful so still plenty of notes from the A major there that, uh, that you can get sorry um, so you just try to get as much sustain as possible from those chords Tricky little bar at bar 17. It's just a little bit of a finicky one.
It's a difficult work. Um, you know, in some ways you can play it fairly easily. You can just read through it, but to sustain everything um, or even make a video for it is, um, it's not just a one weeker, that's for sure. It's, um, it, it requires some experimentation and I've written down what I think are some good fingerings, but really um, you, you could explore and make compromises in different places. Like sometimes I'll close something to sustain something later. Other times I'll, you know, other times I'll, I'll just use first position playing in order to make it practical. But you can, you can change that up. Some, sometimes I do it because there's something more difficult coming in the next bar. Um, so you, you have to experiment a lot. And then when you go to add ornamentation, it, you can get even more difficult if you want it to. So just a little discussion on the piece. Um, it's, like I said, it's an advanced work, so work your way up to it. Um, play some Allemans from, from easier uh, lute music um, or from, from box, you know, uh, cello suites would be a, a good starting point.